Magnet television. Magnet television. Magnet television. You're watching Magnet television because what else are you going to do? Hey, my name is Len Casper. If you're a music fan, I'm pretty sure you have no idea who I am. Uh, if you're a baseball fan, particularly from Chicago or the Midwest, you might have a vague recollection. At any rate, check out my new band, Sonic 45. Go to sonic45.com for more info. I think you'll dig it. Thanks. For me, it's almost impossible to come up with the best song ever written, but I'm probably gonna have to go with Baba O'Reilly uh, the song that kicks off probably my favorite uh, record of all time, Who's Next? Uh, I think Baba O'Reilly to start, won't get fooled again to finish. It doesn't get much better than that. Um, but I think it's not only the who at the pinnacle of their powers, but uh, there's an emotional heft to that song, particularly in the Townsend vocal in the bridge that, that gets me every time. Uh, I think the performances by all four members uh, are just absolutely perfect. Uh, the production is amazing. If you played that song today for a young music fan and didn't tell them who it was or when it was recorded, uh, I think they would buy it if you told them, yeah, this song came out in 2015 or 1995 or 1971 or 2021. Uh, the production is timeless. I think the song itself uh, just keeps getting better with age. So I'd go Baba O'Reilly by The Who. Well, probably the easy answer would be Sergeant Pepper. Uh, when I was in high school, uh, I remember listening to the cassette <laughs> of that record over and over and over again. Um, but I'm actually going to go a little more obscure and a little more recent. Uh, not recent in terms of when the album came out, but in terms of it changing my life. The Blurred Crusade by The Church from 1982. It was their sophomore record. Uh, it actually, at the time, was not released in the United States, uh, which is just amazing to me. I think every song on that record is is great. I actually saw the church a handful of years ago uh, perform that album front to back uh, in Chicago, and it was incredible. But that record really inspired me to create my band, Sonic 45, uh, the post-punk kind of jangle pop vibe of that record. I think the production is absolutely terrific. Uh, it doesn't have that hollow 80s sound. Uh, the guitar tones are, are amazing. Uh, Peter Coppice and, and Marty Wilson Piper. Um, as much as I love The Church, Starfish was a great record. I think the best they ever did was their second one, and it's one that really doesn't get uh, a lot of attention to this day. So I'm going to go Blurred Crusade by The Church is the album that changed my life. I've attended some amazing shows, but I think I'll have to go with one I participated in. It was Hot Stove Cool Music 2017. It was late April at the Paradise in Boston. The Cubs and the Red Sox played at Fenway Park that weekend, uh, right up the street. Uh, the Cubs had the uh, World Series trophy in tow. Uh, I was on stage when Theo Epstein actually handed the trophy to the fans, and actually the uh, trophy was, was pretty badly damaged. They were able to fix it, uh, but it, it kind of did like a a stage dive uh, into the crowd, and uh, eventually we did get it back. 
Uh, but the highlight of that particular concert was being on stage and playing bass with the all-star band um, behind frontman Eddie Vedder. Uh, I recall we played a couple of Who songs. Uh, the Kids Are All Right. Uh, Can't Explain. And that might have been it. Yeah, it went by in a flash. But uh, to be on stage with Eddie... Uh, and to play bass with one of the greatest performers of all time was something I'll never forget. Uh, the crowd was amazing. Uh, Red Sox fans, Cubs fans. So there was baseball, rock and roll music. Uh, we raised a ton of money for charity that weekend. And uh, it's something I'll never forget. So this is around 1991 in Milwaukee, where I was attending Marquette University. And there was one of my all-time favorite bands, and I'm not going to name the band because I'm still embarrassed to this day about this moment. But this is, you know, pre-internet, so some of the research uh, tools available to us now uh, were not so available to me back then. But the one thing I knew about this band was I knew the, the name of the lead singer and uh, I might have known the names of all of the band members, but that's about it. But I hadn't really kind of kept up with how this this band's uh, uh, timeline had gone along in the 80s and the 90s. But so this is late 60s, early 70s band and kind of a revival tour. It was actually only one of the original members uh, of the band still in the group. Okay, so without a, a backdrop, I uh, saw this band at a small club. There weren't a lot of people there, unfortunately. Uh, the concert was great. But before the show, I w nearly went up to the one original member and asked what the other lead singer and the main lead singer was up to these days. And I decided not to do it. And I have no idea to this day why I decided not to ask. But I'm so glad that that was the case. Because the person I was going to ask about had actually died uh, a long, long, long time <laughs> before that concert. And it would have been a little embarrassing to, uh, to put the other band member on the spot. So that's probably my most embarrassing concert moment, even though I was able to save myself from that embarrassment. Hey, this is Len Casper, former Cubs TV announcer and current Chicago White Sox radio announcer. I also play bass in Sonic 45. You're watching Magnet Television. Sine.